Welcome back to the second Vapor Cycles broadcast. Today we will mold a couple of carbon fiber pieces. I went for a simple tapered tube as a little homage to the original piece I made, which you can see there in the background. We will be making one using fabric and the other with chopped fiber. Fabric has more of a predictable end result, whilst chopped fiber is more flexible and perhaps more isotropic. As you can probably tell, I'm very new to this instructional video making and probably miss a lot of obvious points. So comment down below if you have any questions. Anyway, let's get into modeling. I'm using Fusion 360 here and the mold is made up of just two revolved shapes. One is the plug, which will go down the center and the other is the tub, which everything sits in. There is a hole down the center for an eight millimeter threaded rod which will be the backbone of this particular mold, keeping the two parts aligned and together. Here is the final sketch I used. Let's send a couple of copies to print and get started. We have the parts printed and ready and the construction with threaded rod goes a little something like this. We put this nut in so that we can push it out later. The core that is. Then the tub fits on. and the whole thing screws together. Now I'd recommend screwing this bit tight so the nut inside stays on top out of the resin. All right, and another thing to watch out for is that this is not gonna be perfectly centered. So you might have to adjust it uh, when you close down the mold. Before getting messy with waxing, a few words about protection. So obviously um, gloves, super important. I'm using just black nitrile gloves. The mask, I'm using a respirator, which is a Moldex 7002. And of course, you don't want to get epoxy all over your table. So polyethylene um, doesn't actually stick to epoxy. It's quite good. Don't confuse it with polypropylene or polyurethane, which actually does. For the mold release, I will be using car wax today. I find it works okay. You can also use proper mold release wax. Uh, both of these are not supposed to be used indoors or you know, you're supposed to wear a breathing protection like the respirator I just showed you. I believe you can also use PVA, although I've never tried. For applying the wax, I recommend a lint-free fabric cloth uh, so you don't leave little hairs all over your print. Uh, and you should also let the wax dry thoroughly before you start using it. I usually apply a liberal amount of wax since releasing the part is uh, much more important than the surface finish uh, you get with these 3D prints. While the wax dries, let's have a look at materials. This is chopped fiber. I've made this from just off cuts of the fabric, same fabric you see here. Uh, you should wear a mask when you're cutting this because you get little hairs floating around, which you might not actually see. <clears throat> uh, for the material, I've made my own stabilized carbon fiber fabric. Um, this is similar to products like Pro Finish and Weblock, um, but you can make your own as you see here by just spraying it with some adhesive. Uh, this is Infutac, but you can probably try a standard paper one. You can also use tape like this, which is bound together, so it doesn't fray like a fabric would. There is also unidirectional tape that is stabilized with some kind of adhesive. And you can always use tow, which is completely unstabilized. Depending on the material you use and the part thickness that you're gonna be making, um, you'll have to estimate how much material you will need to fill it, uh, give it some allowance to the glue itself. Also to mention, epoxy curing is an exothermic reaction, so it will heat up as it cures. Um, if you have a volume sufficient enough or a part thick enough, it will actually heat up uh, to a point where a plastic mold will distort or melt. I will be using infusion resin in this case, which is actually perfect for chopped fiber like this, uh, as it lets it flow into whatever shape. Um, for continuous fiber, I'd actually recommend something more viscous, uh, so the resin doesn't flow out of the fabric while you're laying it. All right, let me clean up here and we'll do some molding.
uh, hopefully you can see a little bit better from this angle looking over my shoulder so the consistency of this is uh, it's really goopy kind of like plasticine you can obviously mold it into whatever shape of the mold you have I find using a molded chopstick is a really good tool for applying this I'm going to be working by placing the charge into the tub first and then putting the plug in which will compress it just moving it around with my fingers trying to shape it preform it I guess uh, before putting the plug in making sure it's staying on the walls rather than at the bottom I think maybe I have uh, used fibers that are too long it's quite annoying <laughs> A little test fit. Nope, it's all bunched up at the bottom. All right, let's try again. I feel I have way too much carbon here. Let's try removing some and adding it slowly. <laughs> Damn, maybe I should have tried this before uh, showing you all. Let's try applying it to the plug first. Feels a lot better. You can at least mold it uh, with visibility and access. You, you can't really do with a tub. So I'm just trying to get it roughly the right thickness all the way around. Oh, what am I talking about? I should have put the threaded rod first. You know what, to hell with threaded rod, let's just do it. I'm starting to regret trying to do chopped fiber here. <laughs> How about we just put it in and then uh, show it with this little pick. So I think my hands are getting in the way of most of this. Um, so yeah, I'm just uh, shoving the charge in with a little pick. You can feel it's not distributed quite equally. On some sides it's really easy to push in, on the others it's really tough. Amazingly it's not leaking through the bottom hole. It seems to be uh, sealed quite well. You can kind of see the resin coming out uh, and the fiber staying in. I'm going to add some more fibers where it feels quite loose to push the fibers in. threaded rod and I'm trying to make sure that it's the plug is not coming back up with my fingers just trying to make sure it all stays together just trying to get it to a point where I feel it's quite tightly packed inside you can feel it with the pick as you push it in Let's hope I have better luck with the fabric. So I'm not going to forget the threaded rod this time. And uh, my glove seems to have broken. I have uh, my scissors ready here because I think we'll have to trim this as we put it in. We'll try again to put the fabric into the tub first and then put the plug in. Actually, I think I'll trim it first. Just trying to eyeball more or less the right height. I'm just going to follow the fibers. Super careful not to distort it. Just going to trim the end here so it's nice and tidy.
right, we got to the bottom of the mold. So we'll just try to spread it out to hit the walls, then put the plug in. Again, just kind of working my way in a spiral motion. Let's see how the plug feels. Gingerly. You can kind of see the glue starting to come out as the carbon is getting compressed. Hopefully you can see that. All right. I don't feel it needs too much pressure, so I'll not put the bottom nut in. Just need some place to rest it on. I'm going to use some scrap wood I have here. Ugh, nothing's quite the right height. Okay. Everything seems good, so I'm just going to leave it here, let it cure, and then we'll have a look when it's finished. It is about eight hours later. Uh, it's quite solid already, but still a little bit malleable. So this is a good point where you can still cut it with a knife. Uh, so this one I'm going to trim like so. Uh, if it gets more set, you can use a metal saw like this, just to trim it. Or if you have a Dremel tool, a diamond blade works really well. This stuff um, is way more annoying, also it's super dangerous, so be very really careful. All right, I'm going to trim it and come back to you. Here we are. This one trimmed nice and flush. This one, not so much. Now for extracting these, um, of course with this one, probably have to use some destructive method. Um, it really helps if you can warm it up, put it in the oven for like, around 80 degrees Celsius, uh, so it softens up. Be careful that um, PLA will anneal and actually become tougher to remove. Uh, for this one, I'm gonna try to use a percussive maintenance, just hitting it, uh, just hitting it on the side. Let's have a look at the final results. I have given both a bit of a sanding. First tap, the chopped fiber. Has a nice marble, obsidian kind of look probably hard to see on camera. Came out really well actually, despite being more of a pain to make. The fabric version with that classic carbon twill look. As you can see, the surface has lots of pinholes. The resin also leaked down, and strangely we have voids in the bottom too. I definitely underestimated the thickness of fabric we needed here. Well, that was a learning experience for me doing this video, and I hope you learned something too. I think we'll make a follow-up video with a more advanced shape and maybe even better framing this time. Until then, if you have any questions, drop them down in the comments and subscribe for more 3D printed carbon excursions. Thanks for watching and see you next time.